This program contains graphic material, including offensive language. Viewer discretion is advised. Yo, this is Stay Fair. I go carnivore niggas. Eat beef like raw meat. Carnivore on niggas. I'm a pedestrian in traffic, niggas off they pedals. I'm like pocket Raheem funeral tossing pedals. Blast off the shuttle. On the midnight run for ass and stilettos, I might break at dawn. I take the key lime pie, roll it up with the Barney. I put tigers on the field like Sparky. And this a Detroit state of mind. You just tardy for the party. Niggas probably work for cops like Hutch and Starsky. You niggas is my sons. I place them up in car seats. And dude, I'm preposterous. Look what the city made, Metropolis. Daddy Warbucks, Papadopoulos. Nikki Kanye and Jane is monstrous. Deck. I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, West Side, Joy Road. Um, you know, went to Cody, Lester, all them schools over there. You know, Joy Road boy, Joy boy, J O Y. You know, as a rapper, man, I started off at 18, so you know, that probably was like 90, 93, 94. That's 17, that's 17, that's, damn, that's 20 years. I'm 20, I'm a 20 year vet, baby. You know what I'm saying? I'm a 20 year vet. On my east side, on my 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 Wayne County round here, we keep it action packed. Still ride, sitting high, I'm relaxing that. If I gotta bring it to you, then I'm taxing that. Blow one with me. Boy, I'm matching that 4450. Boy, I'm snatching that. Rep your city, Detroit with them big blocks. Think pink gators, now nah, ladies on my wristwatch. Huh? I'm the fine line between hip hop and raw rap. You know, that's my style. You know? I let the words become, you know, the rhyme. You know, sometimes when I, I like the word play, I like to play with the syllables, I like to play with the patterns, you know, I like to, I like the way it sounds sometimes more than, than the, the basis of what was said, you know what I'm saying? When I first started rhyming, I used to battle niggas, so everything was, was real aggressive, you know what I'm saying? As well as lyrical, it was real, it was sweet patterns and, and the way the syllables were coming together, but it was real aggression, you know what I'm saying? I was young, you know, just like any young dude living out off of Joy Road or in Detroit, you know what I'm saying? You're going to have that, that a bit of aggression until you grow. This not for little niggas, you know what I'm saying? This for OGs only. You know what I mean? This OG shit. So, um, you know, you just graduate. Like, going from, from uh, you know, elementary school to middle school to high school to college. We in college now. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. Just, 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 just. 
So I usually just do a negative slash death touch. I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, east side, seven mile. Um, as far as DJ style, I'm a turntablist. I don't even like to call myself a DJ. I'm, you know, I'm a, I don't want to just say I'm a battle DJ. I'm, I'm a just, I play with music. You know, my motto is I'm not going to play what you want to hear. I'm going to play what I feel you need to hear. You know, so I, I would say that's pretty much my style summed up. MC and a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to say my greatest achievement. Um, I always was fascinated by crews when I was coming up. So I got a crew together in the early 2000s, Rhyme Asylum. We made a little noise locally and we got, we got some attention from uh, labels. Uh, I would like to say when we opened up for certain groups when we were traveling in New York, things like that. Uh, but probably getting the crew together and getting noticed for our music at the time when hip hop was looked at is really in a commercial state now, we were totally opposite. So I kind of say that was like a, a probably my biggest achievement, you know, look, doing the music the way we wanted to do it, and then, uh, let's say, a major entity kind of taking notice. I don't like using the, the term old school, but I'm a purist, so I still use the traditional equipment. Um, I'm starting to conform to the digital age slowly. I'm in a bracket that's looked upon as some people may say is archaic or it's like, you know, um, it's a relic. You know, I'm not willing to conform to a lot of the way the industry's gimmicky ways of doing things um, with the technology. And I feel that's kind of, it's kind of hampered and, and, and kind of set me back. You know, it's made me, you know, just kind of be skipped over. Or, or maybe I'm looked at, but then the other cat that maybe want to conform to the industry ways, they'll be like, we like this guy, but we can make money from, you know, this cat here. This your boy Foolish from Hot 107.5. The Morning Heat. You can catch me on Instagram at f.raw. You already know what it is. Comedy right here from the D. Well, you know, you got a lot of opportunities out there, but I feel like we've been blackballed. And it, it takes somebody from the outside to go somewhere else to blow up and then come back here to get the respect. It's a lot of artists out here that's hot, and they getting respect everywhere else but here. So right here at the radio station, we try to have an avenue where we play the artist's music and give you a taste of Detroit like nobody else can do. I feel like Detroit always has its own sound. And artists, I feel like it's not reflected here because this is not a main spot where artists come to and can steal music from us. Now you go to Atlanta, we can go to Atlanta and steal the Atlanta sound because that's where the base of artists is at. Same as in Miami, New York, or Cali. A lot of artists don't come here so they can't really steal our sound and take it back to where they go because it's not this is not a base, a hub. So that's why when they say we have a Detroit sound, it's stuck right here in Detroit. Where's the I mean you you? Even though we doing the same thing. I don't hear it. I, I hear um a lot of a lot of cats sound exactly the same. And one thing I can say is is and I want you to make sure you put this on tape. Y'all niggas stop doing everybody else style, dog. Not just in Detroit, but outside the city. You know what I'm saying? Stop doing that, man. You from Detroit, do Detroit, but do it the way you do it. You know what I mean? 
And that's how I feel. It still hasn't been a full, like, like that's the problem. We don't have our own identity. The crab in the bucket theory. The radio doesn't support you here. Um, unless it's the payola. Or you have to sound like the, the either the what's going on now. Like, my stuff doesn't sound like that. You know, I have this boom, bap, rough, rugged, and raw. They'll be like, oh, no, I'm not playing that. Unless I pay. It takes money. It takes a lot of money. And then it takes a crowd of people enjoying your music. You need followers. You need somebody that knows how to market you. It's a whole structure with success. It's not just making a song and then making it a good song. It's about making everything great you do because you got competition of people who got 100 songs wrote before you already that are hits. And we already know they hits because we already buying their stuff. So it's hard to compete without money, without people who really ready to sweat and get that bread. And I'm talking about 24 hours, you dreaming of doing it, and 18 hours out the day, you already do it. That's a part of the game. That's a part of being a fan base. It's a part of, of knowing who you are and knowing your crowd. If you don't know your crowd, then how can you promote to anybody if you don't know who to promote to? So I feel like that's all depends on the artist. Everybody has their crowd. Everything is not made for radio. Everything is not made for mixtape. Everything is not made to drive to. Some songs are straight for the club. Some songs are only to smoke to. Like the stuff you smoke to, you're not gonna be in the club trying to turn up to, you know what I'm saying, a, a weird smoking song. So I feel like that's just on the artist. You have to know your following and know who to promote your music to before you know, you know what I'm saying, who's gonna buy your music. Not everybody like each other. Not everybody gonna like each other. When you're doing music, it shouldn't be about gangs, it shouldn't be about your street, or how much money this person got. You out there to make music. So when you confuse the finances with the quality of the music, you always gonna have a problem. Because this person might make good music, but he gonna be hated on because he ain't living that life. Remember, people respect you even more when they feel you living that life you talking about. And that's the industry. This is a dirty, dirty game, dirty world. The game is real simple. You call me for a motherfucking appearance and I don't know you. You talking, yeah, the dollars and all that. But you done seen, I don't know you. You know what I'm saying? You, you not in this circle. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I could trust you. You done seen me, you know what I'm saying, with all these stacks and the videos and all that. And it's real money. It ain't fake. You know what I'm saying? You see me ride this shit, do whatever the fuck I be doing, and then you like, shit, we can set this nigga up. So it be it be dangerous sometimes. Niggas, you go do a performance, and then they man's out in the parking lot seeing you whoop up in, in that cutty on, on tools or that drop-top Mustang or whatever the fuck, and niggas be ready for you. Remember, nigga, this, this the streets. You know what I'm saying? And just because you a rapper don't mean I love you no more than, than the next man. So... It be hard to trust niggas sometimes. Uh, Bread Boy Fo, producer, songwriter, engineer, uh, pretty much everything you can think about music. I think music as a whole here is a big following. It's like Twitter. Everybody monkey see, monkey do. Um, the actual hip hop heads and people that do music are limited right now because it's so saturated. You got a needle in a haystack right now. You might find one real artist every blue moon, but that's because everybody can rap. That's what it's gonna boil down to. Everybody following what everybody's doing and nobody's being original anymore. I love my city, but for the most part, I hate the music. I feel like most of Detroit follows behind a culture that they know nothing about. And if they do know anything about it, they're, they're just following in the wrong spots. Uh, there's no leadership. Everyone sounds the same. Keep doing it. One day you're going to make it. <laughs>
a lot of biters out there. That's how this whole world is really conceived of, is generations of biters. They taking stuff from 20 years ago, trying to act like it's theirs now. So keep biting, and you're gonna get somewhere. If you're originator, don't kill yourself. And don't let them steal your work. Just keep going at it, no matter how old you get. Maybe I think the, the people who are having the current success in music right now, you know, um, need to, to begin to individualize themselves from the current sound. Um, everybody sound the same right now. And it's, um, it's good in one sense because now what are you doing is you're, you're, you're building a foundation on, off of one sound. And the rest of the world can only get that from us. They can't get it from nobody else. You know what I mean? You got the occasional good people. I'm not gonna say everybody's bad. You do have people that can drop some hot music and you got the lyricists. But the people that actually have talent in music is being watched out by the people that got talent with money. Well, I'm talking in, in my perspective. I've seen a lot of people blow a lot of money on something that they believe in, but it just wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? The artistic, even the image, even the song, it just wasn't there. So I'm not gonna say money can do money can do a lot of stuff. But when it comes to this music scene, people have to genuinely like you. You can't buy your way into somebody's life. I feel like the people with the talent don't get heard because of the people with influence and power being heard. And for the most part, I hate the music. It's full speed, the beats are turned up, um, they mimic groups that's successful, that's still striving for success, that on the industry level hasn't had any success. And I just really don't care for it like, at all. I wish them well, but I hate it. If, 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 if something is whack, it's whack. You can't sit up there and be like, oh, you gotta support them, no, you gotta support them. If it's whack, you support them by saying, look, we should, you know, constructively criticize, like, look, you should work on this or this and this and this. Or for, for your genre of hip hop, you should be focusing on, if you're more of a traditionalist, hey man, you need to tighten up your, your cuts. You need to tighten up your, your beats or whatever. You know, your, your rhymes or this, that, and the other. You know, it's a lot of that that's also hurting it too. So the politically correctness kind of, kind of got to stop. All this, so we got to come together. And then the same people that say come together, those be the same ones that turn around and be like, you know, I ain't fuck with them. You hear an artist say, I got 10 beds in my pocket, I ride around up Somerset shopping, this and that, da, 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 and can barely pay for a session. $30, $40 an hour and they be about to die. It's pulling teeth from a dragon. You shouldn't have to portray to be something that you're not or something that you haven't lived. <laughs> I've, I've shoot this, I've sold that, and I've been here and I done done this and that, and I ain't done nothing. Like, Never held a gun in your hand, but you rapping about you got a 40 with a 30. You saying that you sold drugs all your life, but you stayed with your mama in her basement. Um, it's a lot of fraudulent rap running around. Well, you need to do more than just social media. You need to do more than just a video with popping bottles and stuff like that. You need performances. You need to show people your energy. You need to classify yourself into something that you know you can be and everybody ain't gonna expect you to do nothing else. Because once you find your lane, you stay on it. You ain't trying to be nobody else, no matter what the mother do, say do this, do this. No, you do you. And once you keep on doing you and we like you, we gonna expect to see more of you. These artists running around and everybody done sold drugs and everybody into something that they think is intriguing to uh, hip hop listeners, or rap listeners. It's it's not. Most of the time, we just want to hear good music. It's the entertainment business. And they forget about entertaining. You just put on the front for something that they think people want to see, not realizing that it's already been done and covered. Can't run those same grounds twice. So market yourself in every which way, but look at a positive way. Performances are the, are the things that really make money. You ask any artist what he makes money off of the most, and he gonna say the tours. Not internet, go ahead and download this. They're gonna make that money off the tours. That's the big business. So if you got a show, 
We want to see a show, not just you rapping, standing in place. You got to get some dances. You got to get some lyrics that really make people feel that you saying something. Because some people are just making sound effects and talking about dope and money. That's it. And some people is all right with that, but you can't be too many of them. You can't be too many of the same type of groups out here right now. You got to find yourself and then take it to that level. You can take a look in my eyes and see I'm focused on the dollar sign. It's no surprise that the way that I grind is suicide. And who am I? It's the guy that always ride. Push the V8 to the limit in the 55. I tell a hater die. Focus on me, nigga. Why? I will keep doing what I do. It won't stop. Bread winners alumni. I come to a thousand while I fill up my neck. He got the reason that it's popping, so I reach for my rock. I remember back in the day, you know what I'm saying, all we had was the hip hop shop. We ain't had no other venue, no other places to go to and express ourselves musically. We ain't had nowhere to motherfucking, you know what I'm saying, go kick it, fuck with niggas who 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 like the same shit that we like and wanna wanna show it publicly. All we had was the hip hop shop. That's how I came up. I feel I feel it's wrong for um uh, promoted to charge artists to to perform. I right? got a song called "Fuck the Promoters," um, and it talks exactly about that. You know how you're charging the artist to perform, plus you're collecting it money at the door. You know, um, it to me, it's like you know you don't really give a damn. You know, you just strictly money, 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 money. And I understand it's a business. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you shouldn't be charging, if, if, especially if those artists are bringing acts to you as a promoter for your venue, you know, for your event to be uh, uh, packed or, you know, whatever, whatever. And then you're sitting there charging them 20, 10, 15 to perform or whatever. Yeah, that's, that's bullshit. What do the, 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 the DJs think about your music? Do they like playing your shit? Do they? So why you expect me to motherfucking bring you in this bitch? for free, send the baddest bitches over to your table, you know what I'm saying, send a bottle, you know, drinks on, on the promoter, and you ain't nobody. I, I'm not cool with that. You know, you gotta realize that the, the, the amount of attention, especially as a rapper, and niggas gonna love me for saying this shit, only the promoters, the rappers gonna hate me and I'm a rapper, I don't, I don't promote no venues unless it's my shit, but, from a promoter standpoint, you know what I mean? It get it get difficult because rappers require certain amounts of attention depending on what they feel they stature is. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like I'm a motherfucking star and shit. I don't feel like I'm no superstar. You know what I'm saying? But it might be a nigga who ain't even had a inkling of success and swear up and down he's supposed to be treated you know, in VIP, he's supposed to be sent bottles and that's, you supposed to get in for free? That shit don't happen, you know what I'm saying? Because you didn't meet a certain level of, of success and with that certain level of success come a certain level of respect, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, the promoter is thinking about numbers, you know what I mean? How many people you bringing in? How many people gonna come see you? How many people gonna fuck with you? If you put out a project, how many people gonna buy it? Nowadays, open mics turn into anything, just like what it says, open mic. 
you might have somebody trying to rap, sing, tell jokes, whatever. But usually it's, it's, it's like rap. But then, since it's an open mic, a lot of cats come up in there, it's the same bullshit, same act after act, song after song, beat, same, everything. I came through open mics, you know what I'm saying? So I have, I have the utmost respect for um, any promoters and venues and the uh, local rappers that, that go to open mics and do their things. Um, what I've learned over the years is, you know, um, open mics is, is, is middle school. You know what I'm saying? Some people get lost into the fame of being an open mic rapper that they never grow. So, you know, I love the open mics and all of that, but you have to graduate from it. You could always come back and participate in the sport, but um, what is what is the next thing for you? You know what I'm saying? Where are you gonna go from there? The showcase can be better than open mics because usually open mic you might only get to do one punk ass song. Um, usually showcases you may get to do three, four, maybe five. I prefer the showcases when they're they're done right. I feel the the, the open mics. I would say those are cool to like sharpen skills, but half the time it's not even like that now anymore. It's just another way to get some money at the, the guy making little ticket sales. You know. The showcases, you have to graduate from open mics to showcases. You know what I mean? Because as you become a seasoned a season rapper, you know what I'm saying? And you realize that you realize that your niggas can eat off this shit if you do it right. You know what I mean? You have to do showcases because you need that attention on you. I like the girls, the girls that go home. That's all I want, so fellas make home. I want the girl, the girl with the home. We like the girls, the girls that go home. I like the girls, the girls that go home. That's all I want, so fellas make home. I want the girl, the girl with the home. I've been doing a Earl Flynn since about 88. A lot of people here want to trade my place. Got an extra room where your babe can wait. These ain't Air Force Ones. These are baby and ace Straight from the shop Got the candy sex I'm a hot boy On beats like Manny Fresh Her lips real big You know Some people Don't put enough work ethic in To chase the dream Detroit has gotten To a level To where the dream Is, is so touchable When we was coming up It was in the sky You know what I'm saying Do you know that We was so We was so Motherfucking happy When Proof announced That he got signed To Tommy Boy you know what I'm saying? That was the first nigga we even, anybody had even thought of that that we even got signed to a label. You know what I'm saying? And it never came to fruition. You know? That was fucked up. You know? Police say Proof was shot in the head after an altercation at the Triple C Club. He was rushed to St. John Holy Cross Hospital, but was pronounced dead on arrival. I remember seeing Eminem win the battles at motherfucking the hip hop shop. Me and Phil was together, you know what I'm saying? Like, who was this white boy killing these niggas? Who was the white boy slaughtering these niggas left and right? You know what I'm saying? Why do Bizarre say such crazy stuff? But it was so fresh, you know what I'm saying? We was there the whole time. Handouts are rare. Everybody looks for a handout and they think, oh, I got the best rap skills, this and that. Yeah, somebody could have beat Jordan, but they never made it to college because they didn't put in the effort. So they're nobody and they didn't beat Jordan and Jordan is Jordan. I feel like as an artist, if you create your own fan base, you go out there and attack it, build your social media world, then you got the opportunity to prove you are who you say you are and you love to do what you love to do anyway. And you don't have to have a um, record deal. You could become your own record deal, so stop looking for handouts, stay original and work. That would be my main advice. That's what I do. If you ain't got no money, keep your music to yourself. Mm. But they gonna steal it. So if you really out there and you know your music is at a certain level, wait, hold out for the right deal. Or just go ahead and start performing and putting it out yourself. I mean, hey, having your own corporation of business is how you get your own corporation a business. I'm not saying it's involving money, but it's involving relationships. You have to be at the right place at the right time. You have to know certain people to get to certain places. I don't care how good your song is. I done heard a lot of hits. And just because that person didn't pay their dues, they wasn't 
in the right place at the right time, that song's not gonna elevate. Even if it is a hit, if we hear it it's a smash, it's just it probably not their time because they didn't pay their dues because they don't know this person. They don't know when they go to this city to holler at that DJ. They don't know not to go in that city because they're not doing that in that city. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gonna take certain things from the place. You got it in the NBA, NFL, every sports arena is playing hip hop. I don't know what more you can do. You got it in church now, so you know, hip hop is doing this thing without me even thinking about it. I'm just happy to be part of it and to see some of the greatest, the greatest MCs that ever been put out. I'm a Detroit nigga, I'm a Detroit nigga, I'm stuck.